if even if I've talked to other to people that in in my day to day life that seem to be in suffering, and I like explain things that are starting to help me. I'm not saying that I'm enlightened or, or realized or anything like that, but like in other jivas, there's just maybe the veil of ignorance is so strong that there's either no interest, they think it's false, or they just don't understand, right. and don't seek, or it doesn't. The message doesn't resonate. Like, right. what is it that makes us ready to? Right. What is it that makes us ready? Why does Vedanta appeal to somebody and not to others? Uh, See, the basic requirement is there in everybody. What is the basic requirement? If we feel we are dissatisfied with this particular state of things in my life, that's enough for you to start on spiritual life. That's enough. But what happens in most cases is, we feel... Quite apart from spirituality, there is something available right here in this world which will, which will um, serve to take away my suffering and give me peace of mind. Yeah, spirituality, religion, maybe, yes. But you know, I'd really be happy if I got a million dollars. No, I don't want a million dollars. I just want a hundred thousand dollars. That's enough. I'll be happy. Or I'll really be happy if um, I... Get an, uh, get this nice house in the suburbs with a, with a nice school district. That's what is not not Vedanta. Uh, this relationship, this m- amount of wealth, this amount of success, and I, ha- I have got it. Now there are people who strongly, strongly feel that, and no amount of persuasion will dissuade them from that. The only thing that will work is experience. Let them go through it many, many times then they'll begin to see, neither this nor that is helping me. Then one awakens into something higher. And that could be spiritual life. And there are stages. One awakens from pure pursuit of materialism to a moral and ethical life. That makes you happier. From just being a good person, you know, I'm a good person but an atheist, to uh, awakening to a higher power. From being a devout um, bhakta, devotee, catholic or something to the pursuit of jnana, of, of spiritual knowledge. That that higher power is within me. So there are stages of awakening. And it depends on the readiness. So re- the readiness in Sanskrit it's called adhikara. Adhikara means a uh, person qualified. And qualification consists of two things. Yogyata, capacity, and akanksha, the desire, the aspiration. Both must be there. And both come through life. Life teaches you. It's the wise one who takes the lesson very quickly and moves on. It's the foolish person who keeps on repeating it and churning his wheels in the mud and trying to just digging oneself in deeper and deeper and deeper while precious time flies by. Precious time flies by. And soon nothing more can be done. You have to wait for the next life. <laughs> so, but that is not lost. In the next life will, a person becomes a much wiser person. And say, your parents will say, what a wise and mature child. <laughs> <laughs> That's one. Another way of looking at it is, we, first of all, we try to make ourselves happy by rearranging the world. By changing the world. My circumstances in the world must be different. A better house, a better car, a better relationship. We try to reform the world, we try to reform others. Make others, they should behave like this and they should not behave. The main purpose is they should all be consistently and endlessly nice to me. That's the basic (laughs) thing. If you say it out loud, it sounds silly, but that's what we are trying to do. Then, slowly, we realize that doesn't work. It's very difficult to rearrange the world. Even if you do, according to your liking, it still is not particularly satisfying. By the time the world has fallen into the perspective you want it to be, you have moved on and changed. It is no longer satisfying to you. Then you become mature. You try to rearrange your own life. Okay, I'm going to get up early and I'm going to do yoga and uh, I'm going to eat gluten-free and that will make me happy. 
rearrange the physical circumstances of your life, very soon you see, no, that's not going to make me happy. Then you go further, no, the real thing is inside. I'm going to rearrange my mind. I will have holy thoughts. I will think about uh, my Ishta Devata. I will repeat my mantra. And, uh, or I will calm my mind down in meditation and follow the breath and things like that. That works much better if you do it seriously. But even that's not ultimate. I'm now speaking from the Vedanta perspective. Finally you come to who is this I who is trying to be materialistically happy or morally happy, ethically happy or spiritually happy. All of these projects belong to the I. Who or what is that I? When you investigate it, you find the real I, Chidananda Rupaha Shivoham, who does not need any of it. Who does not need the wealth and pleasure of the world, who does not need the, uh, the, uh, the high moral ethical life. Not that the person becomes unethical, remember, that's a wrong, wrong uh, understanding. Who does not even need spirituality. Shankara said, you say, who, who said that? You're making it up. No. Remember that Chidananda Rupa Shivoham Shankaracharya sings, I am Shiva, I am the nature of bliss and consciousness. One of the lines goes, Na dharmo na chartho na kamo na moksha Chidananda Rupa Shivoham Shivoham What do people want? They want pleasure. I don't need it. What do people want? They want power and wealth and success. I don't need it. What do people want? They want virtue so that they can go to heaven after death. I don't need that also. What do people want? They don't, they don't want any of that. They want moksha. They want to come to Vedanta society and get liberated and enlightened. I don't need that also. Who needs that? The ignorant person needs it. I am Satchidananda. Why do I need moksha? So that's how it comes. Step by step. Unless one is ready, it will take time. You can save yourself a lot of grief and a lot of uh, effort and time and many lives by coming straight to Advaita. <laughs> <laughs> many people think non-dualism is really dry and abstract and the final thing. No, I think it's the easiest thing. It's the direct approach. Why not do that? Ramana Maharshi was once asked, Am I qualified for Vedanta, for, Ad, for Advaita Vedanta, non-dualism? Am I qualified for non-dualism? And Ramana answered, Did you say I? <laughs> because you know his main method was, Who am I? If you can use the word I, you are qualified. If you are using the word I, and we all are, who is not? In that case, you have got an I. That means the vertical I, not this one. I was talking about um, getting the eyes checked, going to the eye doctor, and then somebody said to me, Swami, you are also an eye doctor in one sense. <laughs> the, <laughs> the vertical eye. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> yes. Since we have it within ourselves all the time, why take a roundabout route? Why not walk straight to it? Who am I? Who is the I who is trying to be worldly successful, who is trying to be moral and ethical, who is trying to be spiritual? Who is that? What is that I? 